Hi there, Guy from Bugs and Stuff here. So something a little bit different today. You join me on this midsummer's June morning. It's raining, as you'd expect for the UK summertime. And we're in the bug van and we're heading to Northumberland in the UK, not far from where I live. My good friends are in the area. They came up for a catch up. Uh, Andrew Smith, Paul Carpenter, Richard Gallen, Ray Gabriel and Danny Sherwood. They're all in the area. I've spent a few days with Andy talking about upcoming video projects uh, that we're going to be working on in the future but today I'm meeting up with Richard, Ray and Danny and we're going to do some UK spider recording. Now those guys are heavily involved with the British Arachnological Society and when we're not off about in the different parts of the world doing spider surveys on tarantulas and baboon spiders they, those guys can often be found in the UK doing spider recording schemes. So we've got all the permits in place because we're visiting Triple SIs, which are sites of special scientific interest. And the whole idea of the recording is to basically hopefully discover new UK species that's never been seen in these areas. Uh, the work is very important, often we can find new species and put the X on the map for the recording scheme and often we can rediscover spiders maybe that haven't been recorded in that site for, for many years. So I'm hoping the rain's going to disappear and we can get out and do some filming. I've got all my wet weather gear because like I say it's midsummer here in the UK. Very damp and dreary unfortunately. But I'm still looking forward to it. I'm about 15 minutes away from meeting up with those guys uh, so once we get up there we're going to talk about techniques we're going to talk about equipment that's used to do these surveys uh, and everything that's involved basically uh, we might not get any positive IDs on these spiders uh, for a while because UK spiders are quite hard to identify especially really small ones and they often need to be looked at under the microscope so that's Richard's job once he gets back home to collate all the information and submit all the records to the spider recording scheme. So once we're up there we'll get set up and we'll see what we can find. Should be good. So first off let's introduce the team I'm working with today. First up Richard Gallen. Richard is a UK-based arachnologist and is probably best known for his work on African tarantulas or baboon spiders. He's published many scientific papers on their taxonomy, behaviour and has described many new species over the years. Richard and I have travelled and worked together on many African research trips and I've known him now for over 25 years. And he's also the editor of the British Arachnological Society newsletter. Next, Ray Gabriel. Again, I've known Ray for over 25 years and he too is best known for his taxonomic work on New World Tarantulas, having described and revised many species in genera in recent years. I've also travelled with Ray doing field research, most notably in Turkey, where Ray, Richard and I discovered a new species to science on the Syrian border in 2012. Finally, Danny Sherwood. Danny is focused on the taxonomy of tarantulas and is also an experienced museum curator at the Natural History Museum in London, working on specimen preservation and collection digitisation. Ray and Danny have published many scientific papers in recent years, and in 2020, Ray and Danny described several new species from South America and Trinidad, and this included a new genus and a revision which included a species they actually named after me, Spinosa tibia palpus tanslii. How cool is that? So Richard, Ray and Danny were visiting three sites in Northumberland during their stay and I joined them on their last day. Butterburn floor is a blanket bog, meaning that it lies over the landscape like a wet blanket. It receives moisture from groundwater as well as from rainfall. Peat is actively growing and an abundance of sphagnum moss which forms extensive lawns and hummocks known as patterned mire thrives in this wet environment. Butterburn floor is a triple SI and managed by the Cumbrian Wildlife Trust. So why this site then? 
Well, we were after a very special spider with the scientific name of Menicia marginella. It was first described in 1834 and is widespread throughout Central and Northern Europe. It wasn't until 1987 when the species was recorded for the first time in Britain. It was found at Shakespeare Cliff near Dover during the construction of the Channel Tunnel. Menicia marginella belongs to the Linifidae family, which are commonly called money spiders. So as you'd expect, they're very, very small. Butterburn Floor is one of only three sites in the UK that the spider has been recorded, which makes it a target for our search. Some of the larger inhabitants of the site included these wonderful black slugs, and we also found several oak egg moth caterpillars here. We used two primary methods to search the site, sweep netting and vacuum sampling. So once on site, I asked Richard to explain what's involved. Okay, we're here at Butterburn Flow and we're using a vacuum sampler to look for the rare spider Minicia marginella. Now, this machine has revolutionised survey work for spiders in Britain. All it is is a two-stroke petrol leaf blower come vacuum and we've put an entomological net in the nozzle so when you set it going it effectively sucks all the invertebrates out of the vegetation and retains them in the bag. Then all we do is empty that into a sieve, like so, and then sieve it over a tray, and then we can see all the invertebrates we've found, and then we select the ones that we're looking for. And in this case, this has successfully found Minicia marginella in se at several points at this site, so really good. And it would have taken us hours on hands and knees searching methodically through the moss and vegetation to find it otherwise. So it's a time saver and brilliant piece of field kit and it doesn't damage the surface of the bog either. Let's watch Richard get set up then. As the vacuum sampler is petrol driven, he always wears a respirator and ear defenders. Using a stabbing motion, he presses the vacuum against the ground to form an airtight seal and this brings the invertebrates to the surface and up into the net at the end of the sampler. It's basically a leaf blower in reverse. As you'll soon see, this machine is very effective and it only takes a few minutes of sampling to get a good range of spiders and other invertebrates. All done, let's take a look at what he's got. I emptied the G back into the sieve with the sample that we've concentrated and just using the sieve to get rid of all the ve loose vegetation. And all the invertebrates that have been hoovered out of the vegetation are on the tray. And then it's just a matter of sorting through them and picking out the interesting ones. Red and black job there. Using a device called a pooter, the spiders are collected and go straight into alcohol. And they're going straight into alcohol? Yep. Yes. Most of them need to be identified down the microscope. Because they're so small and you're looking for trichobothria and various things. Uh, so why are you avoiding are you only taking out what you what you're after or yeah, so you so not take everything? No, all the things that are obviously immature you'll just ignore. So there's no point taking them. You can't identify them. But the idea is just to get a representative sample of what's in the habitat, picking out anything that looks different and obviously leaving as many duplicates behind as possible. Because you can see most of the stuff comes out alive in the sample, so you're not doing much damage at all. Cool. 
So where do these records end up? Uh, they're for the Spider Recording Scheme, which is a national recording scheme that covers spiders in the whole of Britain. So we're essentially mapping all the species of UK at 10k square resolution across the country. And it gives an idea of how rare a species is across the whole of Britain, how common it is, whether we're getting declines or increases in certain species. What I found fascinating about this site was the amount of different spiders and invertebrates that were in the sample. Often we look at a landscape such as Butterburn and our first thought may be that there's nothing there, nothing to see, that these Cumbrian landscapes are pretty bereft of life. But it's not until you take the time to sample in an appropriate manner that you soon realise that they are in fact teeming with life. Spiders, harvestmen, ticks, ants, caterpillars, thrips and much much more can be found here. An amazing diversity of wildlife. Check out this cool pseudoscorpion. They're tiny and are rarely noticed due to their small size, despite being common in many environments. They are small arachnids with a flat pear-shaped body and pincer-like pedipalps that resemble those of a scorpion. The abdomen is short and rounded at the rear rather than extending into a segmented tail and stinger, like the true scorpions. Using a hand lens, Richard identifies our target spider and as you can see, it certainly isn't as large as the other spiders we usually find on our field trips. So what's the name of it? Uh, Minicia marginella. So if you look at the abdomen, it's got two dark stripes down the side. It's only known from three locations in Britain. So the first location was near the Channel Tunnel excavations. Uh, then it was found here. And then it was found at Fens and Wixall Moss. And it's a, generally a, a bog spider, sort of raised bog species on the continent, but extremely restricted in Britain. After another sample, we managed to find a mature male. Yeah, that looks like an adult male. Yep. So if you get it in lateral profile guy, you'll see it's a bloomed head. Yes, you heard that right. Males are unusual and very distinctive in that they have a balloon shaped head which can only really be seen once the spider is photographed under a microscope. Yeah, you can see it with even with the naked eye. Yeah. And what's the reason for that? Any obvious reason? Uh, or? They're used in mate mating. So they often produce uh, these fluids out of the top, top side of their head that sort of, sort of part, it, part of the mating ritual. So the female's chelicerae clamp onto the side of the male's head and then he drinks the eggs a day. Danny was using a very similar vacuum sampler, but this one was battery powered. So what I'm going to do now is sort through the sphagnum moss and the general vegetation and then anything I want to collect I'm going to use this which is a pooter which I'm going to use to suck them up, examine them and then if I want them they will go into the specimen tube. So here we can see Ray demonstrating the sweep netting technique. This method collects invertebrates that live in the top layers of the grass, so a very different habitat to that of the moss on the ground. This is a sweep net, talking about a butterfly net into a heavy duty sweep net, stainless steel arms, stainless steel handle, and basically just sweep through the foliage for an X amount of time, and then glasses on, head inside, 
see what there is. If there's anything good, out comes putter. I can suck it up into, into the putter. So I look for beetles, flies, ants, bees, wasps, some of the other interesting uh, orders, and spiders for these guys as well. The bees we go to, or the bees, ants, bees, and wasps, records will go to the bees, ants, and wasps recording scheme. The flies and dips recording scheme. Beetles uh, through contacts at National Trust Museum London. Uh, the, they'll go there for identification and then the records go to the call up recording scheme. Because coming to a site like this is out of, the, out of the way for so many people, getting records of anything from an area like this is really important. So for the dipters, coleopterists, hymenopterists, anybody else, me coming here and just catching what is technically bycatch is really valuable information for them. So a really successful sampling of a very fertile site with both males and females collected, meaning everyone is happy. I'd just like to point out again that we had permits to work this triple SI site and we don't recommend carrying out such activities without the relevant paperwork. So Richard had to head home that afternoon, but Ray, Danny and I decided to visit a very different location to search for a very different spider. Another triple SI site, this time managed by Northumberland Wildlife Trust. Williamston Nature Reserve was a completely different habitat to that of Butterburn Flow. This is a notable reserve which contains a small area of grassland and features several interesting species of wildflower, including alpine pennycress, spring sandwort and mountain pansy. What you got? There's a lot of flies in there, a lot of dips are. So if you want to get the camera in there, you'll just see what happens when you put your head in. All right. So if I go over the head first, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> And then you go in with the camera. Wow. <laughs> That's just one sweep. That's just one sweep. <laughs> so normally you let a lot of the dips are go. You see what's left. Oh, that's interesting. We did a small amount of sampling here on the grassland areas, but we focused our attention on the river shingle in search of our target spider, Arctosa cinerea. We're here on a small nature reserve in Northumberland and we are on river shingle. Now this may look like a bleak inactive habitat but river shingle is one of the best habitats for some of Britain's rarest spiders. These rocks host some lycosids which are wolf spiders, they host some linophyids which are money spiders and generally it's an extremely exciting habitat but they're generally under recorded for two reasons. Firstly because it's quite hard to get to some of these sites and it takes really dedicated recorders who are willing to go that extra mile up the road, literally, to get to these sites. And secondly, it's a lot of rock turning. You may find a spider under the first rock if you're lucky. If you're not, you might find it under the 50th. So it's an intensive habitat, but it's one that could really pay off. So this was a less productive site, yielding only a few lycosids or wolf spiders. The lack of diversity was probably due to the past pollution from heavy metals in the area and also the disturbance caused by nearby human activity. There was a busy campsite nearby, unlike the more remote Butterburn site. There were many stonefly larval cast skins here among the rocks also. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to find our target spider at this site, but luckily Ray, Danny and Richard had found a couple of specimens on one of the days previous to my visit. Luckily for me, they had collected these alive, so it gave me an opportunity to film it in its natural habitat. Oh, 
sont râpés. <coughs> I think you'll agree that that is one impressive spider. Check out the coloration and pattern that helps this large lycosis blend in perfectly with its surroundings. Here's Richard explaining what makes this rather large wolf spider so special. Okay, so we're here in Northumbria looking for rare spiders. Uh, we, there was a historical arachnologist lived in this area called Hull and he made a lot of important discoveries and many of these spiders haven't been seen since Hull's time so we were very keen to actually go back to some of his sites to find these things. Uh, one of the important spiders is Arctosa cinerea which is a river shingle specialist. It's only found on exposed riverine shingle on rivers and in this area it hasn't been recorded since the 1940s. So we were very lucky yesterday to discover two specimens at a, a site where it hasn't been found before. It's a new 10 km square record and it's one of Britain's largest spiders. And this is an adult male here, so I don't know if you can see that, but quite an impressive, well camouflaged spider. It lives under the river shingle, big cobbles, next to these uh, exposed riverine shingle banks. So it involves a lot of stone turning to find this. You won't find this in any other habitat in Britain, it's a very habitat specific thing. Uh, there are cases of it living on lake shores on the continent, but in UK it's largely a river shingle specialist. So that was a really important find. So we've, we're actually very pleased with our, our work this weekend. We've turned up lots of new species records, lots of rarities. and This was definitely the biggest spider that we've found so far. So that brings us to the end of a very enjoyable day recording spiders here in the northeast of the UK. <laughs> Let's finish with another look at that amazing river shingle spider, Arctosa cinerea, in its natural habitat, a spider that hasn't been recorded in this area since 1947. That's 74 years ago, and we're pleased to report that it's still there. Huge thanks to Richard, Ray and Danny for allowing me to document their research and hopefully it won't be too long until we meet up again and do what we do best, searching for spiders.